The next myth to discuss is a really big one in that a lot of ham radio operators and CBers believe it. And a lot of misinformation has been published by people who should know better. The myth is this. Only a resident antenna is the most efficient. So on 20 meters, for example, only a dipole cut to just the right length with a low SWR is the most efficient. Now, if that were true, I'm going to show you a very efficient all-band antenna that fits in the palm of my hand. Now, I know it's efficient because the SWR is 1 to 1 from 160 meters to 6 meters. Here it is. Dummy load. Just because you have a 1 to 1 SWR does not mean you have a good radiator. And a non-resident antenna is not inferior to a resident antenna. The impedance mismatch in a non-resident antenna is easily corrected by an antenna tuner. Everybody should have one. The antenna tuner, in effect, tunes your antenna to resonance. If the antenna is too long, it cancels out the inductance. If it's too short, it cancels out the capacitance. Well, then why is there still SWR between the tuner and the antenna? because it's connected to the antenna through a length of coax cable. The tuner in the shack cannot cancel out everything introduced by the transmission line. The coax changes the impedance to some value that can't be matched by simply canceling the reactance in the antenna. However, unless you are using high loss cable and the SWR is extreme. You don't have to worry about it. Why? On 80 meters, a 100 foot line of RG8 with a 10 to 1 SWR has an insignificant loss of 1.6 dB. Even with no SWR, the loss is 1 dB. So the SWR causes a difference of a half dB. So what? Now here's an extreme example. You have 100 feet of RG58 working 10 meters with an SWR of 10 to 1. The loss is 6 dB. That's a lot. But it's only one S unit still. Who's going to notice? Now would I be satisfied with that? No, but it works. You're going to make contacts. Why would you use RG58 on 10 meters unless the SWR is low and the line is reasonably short like a CB radio in your car? That'd be fine. You know, you got to have some common sense here. You know, a low SWR could indicate you have a problem. Here's an example. Your antenna has a low SWR across the 80 meter band. That indicates loss resistance, poor connections, poor ground system, high loss cable. A low SWR has nothing to do with antenna efficiency, which is how well it radiates. It only indicates a good match at the antenna feed point, and that's it. So when antenna manufacturers brag about how low their SWR is across the band, that should tell you something. Also, many hams believe the myth that reflected power, the power that is bounced back and forth in the transmission line because of the mismatch, is lost power. Reflected power is not lost. It is not absorbed as heat in the tuner or your transmitter or in the transmission line. I've never had a tuner that felt hot. Now, if you'd like to hear more about that, why reflected power is not lost, check out my other myth videos and do some reading. Some good links are in my description. Now, we should be happy about this. This is really good news. It's possible to work all the HF bands with just one wire antenna and a decent antenna tuner. And you don't need an expensive remote antenna tuner. 
A tuner in the shack works just fine as long as you don't have some extreme SWR. You don't need to be risking your life up on a ladder, trimming a diapole uh, for the lowest possible SWR. You don't need an $800 uh, all-band vertical, which can be a nightmare to assemble and tune for each band. You can make a decent, efficient antenna. And for that much money, $800, you could buy a top-notch tuner and a hat with your call sign on it. Subscribe to this channel for more Ham Radio Mythbusters and other Ham Radio videos. 73.